I'm 68. And I feel like I'm 28. If I sit next to guys on airplanes and a guy is, you know, got a gray suit on, he's lost most of his hair and he's sweating, and he goes, I'm gonna be 55 next week. And you look at this guy and go, I'm 20 years older than you, you know, something like that. And you realize that his job, his lifestyle, has nearly killed him, the stress of his lifestyle. What if that guy on the weekends had a rock and roll band? I guarantee you he'd feel 100 times better because there's something to look forward to. It would be something that he, while he's doing his stressful job, he's going, yeah, but I got to learn the chords to Gloria. You've always wanted to be a rock star, and come on, really, who didn't? But you listened to your parents when they told you to get a real job. There may still be hope. John Imbrussell was the first one who told me about this fantasy camp. And he said, would you do it? And I thought, well, why not? You know, it just sounds like a bit fun. We've all secretly dreamed of being rock gods, jamming out in front of adoring fans. Welcome to Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, where you'll experience the complete rock and roll lifestyle without the lawsuits and STDs. Woo! STDs! My first thoughts were, oh, this seems kind of cheesy. I, I never dreamed I would ever actually have a food fight with the Grand Funk Railroad, and then, an hour later, be eating fish that Ted Nugent caught himself. I couldn't wrap my head around it. I, I had to experience it. You know, I was kind of worried that it might just be like a, a, a fan thing. This camp rocks! You know, I remember thinking, what a great opportunity to get back and work with people from all walks of life. And they're coming here to experience and do something they've never done before in their lives. The hardest I've ever worked in one day in my life. Looking forward to another good bashing of uh, rock camp. Be afraid, be very afraid. I think what's kept the camp around so long is these rock stars, they get a spark because it's really about the music. It's pure. Okay. Hello? Teddy. David. This next song features Mr. Teddy, Zigzag, Big Bag, Andrew Yates, the Greek on the harmonica. Tony, how are you? I'm good, David. How are you doing? Let me tell you about your band. Um, on drums, okay. you got you got Paul Delacarta, Rob Cohen. He's the vocalist. I love that Blake Meinhart. I've seen that kid grow up in camp. That's cool. Artists love to give back because they realize that their success is based on the fan. You have Cammy Fisher, who has come to the camp previously as a drummer, 
and she wants to be a vocalist this camp. Can you imagine a guy like you going from drums to vocals? You, you get more chicks. <laughs> well, not the way I sing. I might lose the chicks. <laughs> Tony, thank you so much. I'm excited about Vegas. I'm looking forward to it. I always, I like working with Paul. He's a great, great human being. Okay, we'll be in touch. I'll see you in Vegas. Thank you. Okay, bye. I grew up in Hackensack, New Jersey, really, as a child. So I, I attribute the success of being at, at a young age at um, going to synagogue with my father. My father was a cantor, and, and I was the only kid there. I learned to talk to people that were older than me, and they looked to help me out. They were just so sweet, you know? I was the cantor's son. And it really gave me the confidence that I could talk to anyone. It is the huge resort hotel, which is the best bet for the city dweller who is looking in the country for the same amusements he has in town, but with fresh air and sunshine added. The Catskills was a place where we went to camp in the summer. They were places where people would go two hours outside New York, and they would basically take a week and go up there, stuff their faces, and they'd go swimming, they'd play bingo, and then every night there was a, a show with a, a singer and a comedian. Look at that boy, he's doing what do you think about what was doing? Sawing a dog in half. It was camp for adults. I became a waiter in the hotels in the Catskills. My brother's a drummer. He had a Jewish rock band. I wanted to be in the band. I tried. I played one gig on bass. I was so bad. My dad turned to me and he said, why don't you go out and book your brother's band and then you can book six other bands at the same time. Don't become an artist. Be an entrepreneur. And here I was booking comedians and singers. When I'd collect the money after the Saturday night show on Sunday, the owners would take off $25 because the comedian wasn't funny or the singer didn't do a Yiddish song. It got me so frustrated because I knew the show was great. I was there. I'll never forget uh, Dr. J showed up to camp. When I saw 2,000 kids running up to Dr. J, I said, this is the business I want to be in. That's when I became a sports agent. I said, I want to represent athletes instead. David Fishoff is an agent who lists Phil Simms, Vince Ferragamo, and Hacksaw Reynolds amongst his clients. Basically, I try to negotiate the best contracts possible and get them the most money. Phil Simms, you've just won the Super Bowl. What are you doing next? I'm going to go to Disney World. Uh, David, you're uh, neither an attorney nor a former player. What are your qualifications? Hey, um, I started basically in the entertainment business, and I believe professional sports is in, an, in its own way show business getting commercials and promotions. I'm going to bring this big to its knees. I'm sharing office space with different music managers. Earth, Wind & Fire's manager, a Meatloaf's manager and record label, Madonna's manager, Chef Gordon, who was representing Teddy Pendergrass at the time, and Alice Cooper, the Ramones. Everyone has gold records on the wall, and I love the, the creativity about this record they were recording, and so I, I started getting bored with professional sports. My name is Tammy Fisher. You are in Lenoka Harbor in lovely New Jersey, down the shore, as we say. On the home front, I have a wonderful man that I've been married to for quite a long time. I'm a mom, I have two great, beautiful daughters. I'm very, very blessed and very lucky, and I think I have a very good life. special thing and I've used it before it's kind of funny but it's called monkey butt case and literally yeah they put it down here so it catches the slat <laughs> I was like what is this for
really bad day, I'm putting on Pantera. Anything to bang my head, to scream. It's the screaming metal, I don't know why. I find solace in the screaming metal. <laughs> takes my mind away from the guy who fell asleep next to me on my bus and commute. I've had many people do that. I fall asleep in my lap, fall asleep, drool on my shoulder, like disgusting things. I'm an accountant. And I work for a pretty high-profile public company. It's a, it's a tough job. I'm one of very few female vice presidents there. I have to make my team feel like I know everything, and trust me, I don't. Obviously, you are aware that ESRT takes training and development very seriously here to enhance your skill set with regards to Variance reporting and analysis. I know, really exciting topic, right? No claps? Come on. <laughs> Tough crowd. So how long have you been doing this band camp? Uh, let me see. Well, I'm in my third year and coming up on my fifth camp. Wow. What's your favorite moment? Uh, my, my back massage from Rob Halford. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that. Nice. So do you learn a lot from them? Oh my god, I've learned so much. Every single camp I go there, you know, you get in a room with four other people you don't know, and everybody wants to play a different song, and half of them I never even knew. And it's like, the counselor will go, just wing it, do it. And I've had to learn new songs every single time I go. So it pushes hard. me. Yeah, it's scary. Would you rather play drums or sing? I don't know. The singing is new and scary to me. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. It's got to be tough. Oh, New York is so rock and roll. Everything goes. I see a Kate Batman almost every other morning running down from Port Authority. You know, you know what? That's rock and roll in my box. Go ahead, go for it, Batman. Awesome. Started the same way for us as it probably is for the rest of you guys. You know, going over to your buddy's house, smoking some pot, and jamming out to a Rush record. You can see the fingerprints on the on the O. You see those? Those are the fingerprints that were by Jeff Beck. Those are his fingerprints. And under the M, those are Eric Clapton's fingerprints. So that thing is now worth $100,000. David Fishoff was a mythical character because he was the gentleman who had put the monkeys back together and it helped relaunch them in the mid to late 1980s. You don't want to take credit for the idea? Well, it's an all right yeah, idea. In all fairness, Mickey, it was... Go wide. Go wide. <laughs> Mickey, whose idea was In all fairness, it was a guy named David Fishoff, who the last couple of years has put together a Happy Together tour, a nostalgic concert show that toured around the country, did very well. David very successfully revived this tour, kind of like thinking outside the box. I don't know what prompted him to do it and made him think that he could be successful doing it. He's had all this success, and you wonder how much does he really know about what he's doing? Somebody once described David as a guy who took the yarmulke to another level. Now, thanks to MTV and syndication, the monkeys are hot again. Look who's eating bananas. Is that it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> David is the only agent that I know who could say he represented sports figures and a beetle. David Fishoff, he came over to London and he said, uh, do you want to go on tour? Uh -huh. I said, let me think. And then I said, yes. Well, I met David Fishoff in 1989 when he produced Ringo Starr's All-Star Band in his first tour. And he really did the world a favor. Ringo hadn't toured on his own. And now it's uh, many, many, many years later and Ringo still tours almost every summer. You know, I'm not a rock and roller. I'm the last guy that's, that's a rock and roller. And part of being a rock and roll is a lot of hang time. I turned to Ringo after the third show. I remember we were in Buffalo and I said, uh, I'm gonna go home and I'll see you in Chicago in two weeks. And he turned to me and said, uh, you remember you promised me you were gonna be with me? I said, well, that was agent talk. You know, I don't really go on these tours. I remember calling my wife and saying, okay, I'll see you home in eight weeks. I'm going on the road with Ringo Starr. 
And out on the road, something happened that changed my life. We're backstage for the fourth show of the tour. Nils Lofgren and Clarence Clemens comes over to me at dinner and tell me they're quitting because Joe Walsh and Levon Helm are having a fight. They want me to come and break it up. And I had just mortgaged my home to finance the tour. And we had a great time. <laughs> we got him good. Cool out. You think got a... We set him up completely, and Levon and I were screaming at each other. When he walked in, I pushed Levon, and he pushed me back. And he took the beer bottle and broke it on his road case, so it was a broken bottle. And came over and stabbed me. I had fake blood. I started bleeding profusely, and David was just... Now, wait, 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 wait. Come on, man. Come on. Okay. I walked away and I said to myself, wow, these guys are nuts. But I realized how much fun these guys have. And that's how I came up with the idea of Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. So what if I could give this to people, to a fan, to enjoy and see what it's like to be with all these rock stars? I completely understand why anybody who's never been to Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp would be apprehensive about coming, because I was. But I walk into the room and I'm going like, wow, this sounds awful but look at the fun they're having. And behind every young camper, there's always an incredibly supportive family. All right, what key is this song in, Blake? It's on, like it's a key. You're right. <laughs> Music. It has definitely strengthened my and his relationship. If we're in the car, we're driving somewhere, I'll ask him a question. I'll say, Blake, who produced this album? And then he'll spit it out. What key is this in? It's an E. It's an E? Yeah. He knows who the producer is. He knows where it was produced at, at what studio. This one sounds like it's in A. He even knows songs down to the writing credits of, you know, who actually wrote the song. There'll be some obscure, it'll be like a Zappa song or something that'll come up. I'm like, he don't know Frank Zappa. And it'll just be. Wow! It's Ed Slash! Blake, at a very young age, between, I'd say three or four, he was diagnosed with autism. Blake called an Alice Cooper wow. doll. Wow. As a parent, to hear those words, it's like, yo, what did we do wrong? Blake would not communicate. He didn't really start talking until age five. I mean, he wouldn't say anything. Find a Blake? Okay. Yeah! You look for something to make your child happy. I mean, I played guitar, and Blake would sit on the couch, so I would sit there, and I'd start strumming chords. He got to a point where, at age 10, he said, I want to start taking guitar lessons. Told my wife, I said, I'm gonna bring him out to Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. You know, what better way? Baptism by fire. Throw him out there and just, you know, I mean, I won't put him in, in harm's way or anything. I said, let's just try it and see what he'll do. Strutter, um, boys are back in town, and um, I just want to jam, man. The transformation has been unbelievable. He lives and breathes music. There's nothing more. I mean, that's his, that's his world. And he's a hard worker. So that passion clicked in his head, and that's why we're here. He's a happy kid. He can't ask for anything more.
When I went to the fantasy camp, it was interesting to me the age group. You would have a 15-year-old kid playing drums and a 45-year-old dentist on guitar. That's one of the things you have to get past when you sing with these guys. You look around at the band, you go, wow, if this band were a real band, it would be the weirdest band ever, but cool. We're talking about rock and roll fantasy camp, and it's rockin' and rollin'. Uh, I did my first camp in Florida. I'm on the beach. All at the Eden Rock Hotel at a five-day, four-night, first-time-ever rock and roll fantasy camp, dreamed up by a promoter when he was touring with some guy named Ringo Starr. thing in our business is everyone's scared to be labeled as hip, it's not hip. I, I never believed not to do anything because it's not hip. You do something because it's good, it's entertaining, and if you have an idea, you make it happen. If the greatest people can be intrigued by rock and roll, here's an opportunity for everybody to get a chance to get involved. When I saw the names on the list when I first saw it, I was like, all these guys are going to be in the same place at one time? These fans, they are going to say to their friends, you dipstick, you should have been there, I told you. I just want to put this finger on that note. So there's a genuine respect and love for the music that we did in those days. All the press came out. About a week later, I'm watching The Tonight Show, and there's Jay Leno, and he's doing his monologue. He said, did you ever hear about this rock and roll fans they can't they have? He said, for $5,000, you can jam with a bunch of B rock and roll stars. He said for $5,500, you could check yourself in the Betty Ford Clinic and jam with a bunch of A rock and roll stars. We got a lot of press, a lot of media, and we signed up about 15, 20 people. It was such a dreadful experience financially. I, you know, I chalked it up to, okay, I have five great ideas in a row. I'm never gonna do it again. And that's what life is as a promoter. You know, you take your chances. Articles were coming out in, in Entertainment Weekly, and you were reading about this. One day I got a phone call from Citibank. They wanted to do a commercial. Sam begged and pleaded, so I sent him to camp. We'd earn lots of points with our new city thank you card. He even hangs out with the camp director. Just like that. Rock and Roll Fans Camp has showed up in pop culture. Bones did an episode. Yeah. Gift certificate to Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. Now, what's that? You're going to be singing with Roger Daltrey from The Who. Try to put us down. I sang with Roger Daltrey. <laughs> um, I can now die. <laughs> Ellen did it for a comedy show. I'm talking about having fun. I have got a bad song in my head, and with your help, I think we can perform it very poorly in front of people who will pretend just as poorly to enjoy it, because that's what Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp is all about. My root beer, Hesh. <laughs> Simpsons was amazing for us. Hello, campers. One day, I was driving to work at The Simpsons, and I'm listening to The Howard Stern Show and he was promoting this thing called Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. Entertainment Weekly has listed it as one of the top 25 episodes. Paparazzi to the left. I got him. Go. 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 The whole thing about the Rock Camp is that I end up learning new things. I mean, a lot of really good players come through, you know, and uh, rubbing elbows with everybody that's on this journey. I, I am. How about the mushroom burger? They call me Pistol because when I was younger, I listened to a, a Motown album, and I'm like, this is this sounds great. And keep in mind, I'm in the fifth grade, and I'm reading the liner notes, and it says Richard Pistol Allen on drums, and I'm like, that's who I want to play like, Richard Pistol Allen. Mind you, knew nothing about drums. I just knew I liked that name. Mm. Fries are freshly cut. Ooh. And the ketchup, fresh. Right off the vine. There's a book that I read called The Healing Drum. It goes back into Africa and it talks about when children are born into the tribes themselves, they are, are raised to be master drummers in the tribes. All the communication is, is done through drums because that is the heartbeat of what we do. We walk in rhythm, we talk in rhythm, 
Uh, we blink our eyes in rhythm. Everything that we do um, is surrounded by rhythm. The drummer's responsibility in the, in the band is, is essential. That's my rhythm. See, that's that constant heartbeat. My job is to lock it in and stay there and give them something that they can move to because they feel the rhythm. When I was younger, I went to church with my dad because he was the most important person in my life. Morning, Fawn. How are you? I think it's important for us to have something or someone that we believe in. Thank you. Bye-bye now. See you next week. There's been so many opportunities for me to be around people that did drugs, that were in gangs, and I grew up in the heart of that in L.A. A lot of my friends, they became gang members, uh, they got involved in drugs, and those are things that I just wasn't interested in. Partly so because I saw my brothers and sisters fall victim to that stuff, and I saw how much it hurt my dad. And I really think it sent him to an early grave. So I, I, you know, I probably still need to work through it, but I have a lot of resentment towards them because they deprived me of the love and growing up with the father. It, God had his hand in seeing that I didn't fall victim to that. So somehow he put drums in my life. I really think that if it wasn't for music, I wouldn't be here today, or I don't know what I would be doing. But music has gotten me through a lot of things. It's my foundation. You can take anything else away from me, but don't take this away from me. You know, I have to have this. I love it because I always make sure as a counselor that my band, whether we're good or not, is that they're having a good time. You know, you look at what your band is and you go, okay, this person can play, this person can kind of play, this person can sing, but kind of can't play. <laughs> Guys, the number one rule at camp is inmates don't run the asylum, uh, right? So right. you guys, when you take your bands, you take control of them, and in the end, they will thank us. And uh, right, Teddy? Absolutely. You make it work. You know, again, there's no, there's no I in band. Some of this goes way back. First concert ever is up here somewhere. Iron Maiden, March 9th, 1985. This is a memory that I will never forget. I would have been 13 or 12 at the time. I remember my parents who were just, they're very straight-laced and very conservative parents, wonderful parents by the way, but they really didn't want me to go to a heavy metal concert. So they made sure that one of my friend's parents went with us. So we go to this Iron Maiden concert and uh, I remember, you know, kind of like rocking out, but then I remember looking back and seeing, you know, my, my friend's mom has just like taken a joint from one of the other people who was in the audience and is like smoking out and I'm just like, really? This is, this is our chaperone? Uh, so mom, that's a true story. The coolest is this poster here, which is me on stage with Judas Priest. This is modeled after a poster that was in my room back in the day and I had to fight really hard to be able to put heavy metal posters on my walls. Judas Priest finally made it up there. A total dream of mine come true. But my mom's in the crowd, like watching, cheering, so excited, and just to see that moment and think, wow, how life changes. son comes home from school and the first thing he wants to do is, okay dad, I really want to get a snack, but let's jam that song first. I'll stop anything I'm doing. Now, this is a shy kid. He's only 14, he's the same age as me, but I'm in Celsius. 
this metal madman inside. It's just a beautiful thing. It's a neat thing about Fantasy Camp. He got so good so fast with such little input. When you play with someone who's great at something, like they are unconsciously excellent at it, it is a different experience. It's a very special thing. I know it sounds a little cheesy that like, oh, it's just a rock and roll thing, but man, for me and for him, it's real. <laughs> All right, rock and roll! It took me back to when I first started in the early bands. I'm talking way, way, way back. It's music in its most honest uh, format. It's, it's a weird thing. I'm getting chills thinking about it. That feeling you get when something clicks in the room. That sort of magic. That's why we all do it. Yeah, as long as I left your right side. This is the band. Rock and roll! Oh, I gotta talk about that. Yeah. The, the Gene Simmons only DJ. Fischoff is a really uh, interesting character. He could be a character in a recurring role in the Goldbergs. He's, he's just crazy. He's out of his mind. You know? And uh, I love that about him. David, I thought, should be in a mental hospital at some point, you know, or he has escaped from a mental hospital. But I called up Roger and I said, who would you like to jam with? If you had an opportunity to meet your hero, who would you want to jam with? He says, Levon Helm with the band. He says, I've always wanted to meet Levon Helm. If you introduce me to Levon Helm, I'll do your camp. And we had formed a bond because of the Ringo tour. So when I asked him for something, he said, of course I'll do it. And he came. Yeah. meet Levon Helm the next day, he said, when are these bands playing? I said, well, tomorrow night they're playing at the bottom line. I've been roped into this. Well, where's your singer? You're standing right there. You're standing right there. <laughs> Let me tell you, these guys, are, I've been down to the rehearsal and watched all the bands, and uh, it's just great to see people gaining a lot of knowledge about our business that has been incredible to me in my life. And let's just hope that uh, in some small way it can be incredible to you for a weekend. <laughs> Off you go, guys. Once Roger started doing it, all of a sudden it opened up the door and Roger said, I can introduce you to Brian Wilson. <laughs> Roger would always call me before every camp, even though he wasn't going to be at the camp. And he was always concerned that the rock star was having a good time. Does Brian Wilson like it? And the fact that he was showing interest meant that, you know, that there's something here. It's kind of like an old Barnum and Bailey type. Uh, and, and because it is a circus, which Mick Jagger recognized all those years ago. Mm. In 69, rock and roll is a circus. David recognized that. And he's trying to just come up with ideas that keep the, the spirit of it alive. And you've got to give him applause for it. Mr. Fischoff. Come on, bring him here. What do we got here, rock stars? You know Paul Stanley's not coming. <laughs> so, uh, uh, goodbye. No. Uh, no, we got, we, we, we got, we got Gene Simmons and Stan. David, I came to see you. Uh, that's that's it. the only okay, reason I'm here. Honest guy. Yeah. You excited? Awesome. We're very excited. Good. Really excited. Good. Good. It's great to good. see you. It's going to be great. Great to see you. Great to see you. It's going to be exciting. Yep. Glad you came. Hello, David yeah. Fischoff. As soon as you walk in the door, you get your welcome pack, you get into a room with a group of people who feel exactly like you do. And you all know you do, and that just breaks the ice right away. And then, you know, maybe Bruce Kulik will walk through the hallway or something and you'll say, hey, what's up, dude? And, and you'll all look at each other and be pinching, you know, and, and you share that experience so quickly with the group that you're with. It's 
see everybody gets excited about coming to camp early. You guys say hello to Steven Adler? Yeah. So y'all know Mr. David Fishoff. This guy is the creator of Fantasy Camp, which is one of the coolest things. One guitar player was shredding like a mother, and I'm thinking, what are you? He goes, I'm a doctor. <laughs> I'm going, wow. You have uh, some kids that come, you know, their parents buy them a camp. There are, you know, lawyers and doctors and business people like myself. Some people, they saved up for this camp, and this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I am a director of compliance for a Medicare health plan back in Portland. As a partner in a copier machine business. A chiropractor now of almost 20 years. Just finished my 30th year teaching junior high and high school choral music. I was an executive, pretty senior executive at Motorola. Been married almost 20 years. We've got uh, four kids. I work for the railroad. I'm a conductor. So I haven't been on a regular vacation since then. It's, we always come here. Yeah. People in the would say, tell me about yourself. I tell them, what I do is I'm an executive at Motorola. I am a rock guitarist. <laughs> Anonymous. I mean, oh, sorry, this is Rock Fantasy Camp. You guys having fun so far? Please welcome Gene Simmons. Hey, wow, everybody. Welcome to Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. This is our 23rd year. 23 years. And if you see uh, Rudy Sarzo and, and, and walking around and you have a question about bass, ask Rudy. Ask Rudy. If you, if, if you want to ask a question about sex, ask Vinny. Okay? And, okay. Go to your room. We're going to start jamming right away. Good luck, everybody. God bless you. Here's opening day at Rock Camp. Are you ready to rock? Your mission at camp. Number one, you got to prepare two sets. I don't care if you do identical sets. It's about helping each other, coming together as a unit to be the best band possible. And, and the best band here, the best band, wins absolutely nothing. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> yeah, we can do that, we can do that. Yeah. So it's always a contested moment when I meet my fans and my camp band for the first time. and a little intimidated, actually. <laughs> oh, you know what I forgot to tell everybody? To come up with the name of the band. Let's see, I had the Daughters of Danger, oh, Big Finn and the Horse Chestnuts. Stack of Yoko's was my favorite band name. And one, two, two, three. Motley Jew. Oi! Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jurassic. Waste band. What is the name you picked? Which one? The F one. Fustigate. Fustigate. What? Fustigate. <laughs> I told you. Exactly. None of us know what the no, hell that no, no. means. You hear Fustigate? Yeah. Go, uh, What's the name you picked? What's that wants? word? Fustigate. Yeah. It means to beat with a club. <laughs> oh, nice. How about That's menopause? Can, can we just throw that out there then? Men. Men. Oh, pause. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was my name. There you go. And you're up front. I think it's funny. I think it's great. All right with that? I'm okay with that. I think it's funny. Okay, the name of the band is... <laughs> you got to come up with a new band name. That's like, you know, naming your son again. You know what I mean? It's like, but that, that STP sticker was a really cool logo that we had on our bicycle seats or on our skateboards. So. We're thinking like stinky toilet paper, <laughs> Shirley towels. <laughs> what are we gonna come up with? And you know, just Stone Temple Pilots seem to be the most important. Thing. <laughs> yeah, no one told me metal guys were silly. I love it though, man. See? <laughs> I'm glad you're taking the positive out of that. <laughs> All right, Mississippi Queen.
Good to see totally you, man. Blessed, Thanks man. for coming. My pleasure. So, Super Kick 10. Let's see. Uh, what size is uh, 14. Lenny Kravitz and I, we, uh, we hooked up by accident when we were in high school. We played together about three or four years. Actually, I was supposed to be on the Let Love Rule album, but I decided to take a gig in Edinburgh, Scotland. And by the time I came back, the album was all done by Lenny. You know, so I missed that boat. Take everything. <laughs> Wrap it up. Thanks, everybody. Always good seeing you. All right, ladies, let's go. I want to show you something. All right, fall, oh, fall in line. Oh, Come on, fall oh, in line. No. <laughs> I want to show you guys how it all began with me in terms of learning to play drums. My very first uh, teacher was Willie T. Brooks. I owe every, everything to him. He was the beginning of it all. Then I met Albert Tootie Heath of the Heath Brothers. I walk up to this fence and I look over and I see this drummer playing. And he says, who the hell is that on my fence? Get your ass off of it. I'm like, whoa, scared me, right? And he said, just kidding. He said, come on in. And it was Tootie. And he was actually rehearsing with a singer named Nancy Wilson, who's a great jazz singer. So from that point forward, he became instrumental in my life. And he doesn't call me anything but Pistol. Pistol, Pistol, that's it. Pistol's the name. And this is uh, Tina Marie. And these are some guys that I played with. And Oddly enough, in this picture should have been Lenny Kravitz. And I think Lenny was standing to the side. As a matter of fact, he called me. I went down to Santa Monica, listened to the tracks. And I'm like, yeah, it sounds all right. Yeah, whatever, Lenny. He invited me to the concert. We went, and I just watched my career disappear. No, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was kidding. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is, you know? All right, I got an idea. I'm gonna do this. I'll go like this, and then and just give me a bonk. You know. Okay. It's okay. Now here's what we do with the bonk. All right. Is we're gonna have a conversation where I'm gonna say something, and then, and then you're gonna say something. And you're gonna say a little word. There. When these guys get together in the room on the very first day. It starts off under this false premise that five people who don't know each other come together to make a band. And you think, how can that possibly work? But it does work very quickly, because they're all there for that purpose, and they're all focused on creating something. these rockers what to do. I, I've learned my lesson. You know, I, they are smarter than I am when it comes to music. And I might be able to make deals and put them in a room together with people, but when it comes to telling them what to do, I let every rock star do what they want to do best at Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. So if they feel that they want to do a master class, or if they feel they want to teach them to write a song, they get very involved in these people and they respect them because they're fellow musicians. So yes, the work is hard, but it's good hard. Oh, wow, organic popcorn. I'm going to lose my voice. We're doing mental health, and do you know what we spent all morning doing? Mom, yeah, I get. Oh. What's your name? Men o pause. Menopause. <laughs> <laughs> you should have done menopause and the hot flashes. I, I tried to throw a hot flash in there, but they said no, it's too much. No, it's too much. They said it's too much. I miss the whole line. So yeah. I think the singing part is harder. Drumming. Oh my God! If you missed a beat or if you didn't hit the cymbal, you could do that and get away with it. Now singing, you gotta know those words. People know these songs. They expect the lyrics to be right. It, it's hard to kind of fake that part. I mean, it's not easy doing these camps. I gotta figure out um, 
at least one more amp. It's been extremely frustrating and extremely hard work because the musicians are varying qualities. Some are very good, but equally they're made to play with some that aren't very good. There were some train wrecks. <laughs> some of them were caused by me. We were about to play Sweet Child of Mine. And Slash made a mistake. <laughs> We still make mistakes. We still make mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> like, you in know. front of 80,000 people. Yeah. You know, but that's rock and roll. You know, Robert Plant and The Who, you know, Peter Townsend. When I was growing up, I looked at those guys thinking, man, they got it together. You know, boy, I wish I had that kind of confidence. They, they weren't confident. Plant standing around, you know, doing things. He didn't know what to do with his hands. Daltrey swinging the mic stand and waiting for Pete to make the next move because they're jamming. He don't know what to do. Folks, we don't have it together any better than you. We just learn how to get out and do it. You're bringing that audience home with you. You're taking them on a ride. That's a lot of responsibility. I mean, you can't explain it unless you do it because it's just one of those things. It's like being a mom, I mean, it's kind of the same thing at being in the rock and roll fantasy camp. It's, it's really difficult to explain unless you've actually done it and gone through it and see how life-changing it is. One, two, and okay. Oh my God. You're making that much salad? Whoa. Wife, mom, boss, that's sort of my mantra. As much as I love my job, I don't think it defines me. I love playing drums. It doesn't define me. It's just another facet of me. I love my family. It doesn't define me. Emma, you don't want, you don't want wine, baby? No. You're not giving her any wine. No, she gets the water. There's water right there. We have the kiss, you know, the kiss condoms. When you're cold, you gotta have the kiss cozy. This piece is a paper mache Jean Simmons that my daughter made when she was really little. Wouldn't be kiss without the kiss Jean Simmons look at our panties. This was great about making media events about everything they did. Did you know that some of our stores are actually open all night? I mean, I've been following them since I was a kid. If anybody told me I could totally live the rock star life, uh, I would have to really, really carefully consider that. There is a price to pay. Yasu. Yasu. If it meant, no, I didn't spend any time with my family, and. My husband was miserable at home alone, and my doggy missed me, yet nah. -uh. Yeah, but it's very good. We gotta get the bottom. Nice. Oh my god, it's so bad. You <laughs> can't eat that, it's not even edible. You believe that crap? Don't do drugs. So, I'm being selfish with camp. As much as I love drumming, I wanted to be on stage with Paul Stanley dancing. The drummer gets the, you know, the little punch or the high five. They come over, they do the little shake, and then they walk off the side, and then that's it. That's the love you get. So can we sign all the memorabilia yeah. first? And then so I'm going to suck it up. I'm going to attack the fear, and I'm going to do this with Paul Stanley, and I'm going to sing. That's what I want. This is like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for me to do this, and I'm hoping I can pull it off. So this is really scary. Why do you do it here? <laughs> Did you pay to come to camp this week? <laughs> I was going to say, you know, how do you get in the business? You open the door. If we were just wearing jeans and, and pumas, we could play into our 80s. But when you're carrying around 30 or 40 pounds of gear, and you're running around, and you want to make sure that your stomach's not hanging over your tights. <laughs> do you think we could possibly see any past members get up to jam with you guys for a song on stage? Anything's possible. Yeah, I'd love to see like Bruce Kulick get up and do something with you. So would he. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
music is magical. I think all the arts are magical. I just gotta chill because music is indelibly a part of who I am. But when you're younger and you don't have kids and you don't have family, your band or your music or whatever you pursue is your life. The beauty about having children, hopefully, with uh, the right spirit, quite honestly, it's, it's part of why we're here on, on Earth, I think, is to produce children who are better than us, go further than us, and make the world better than we do. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Blake, he's a pretty important part of my life. I connected with him pretty early on. I've been teaching him for about a little over four years. Like well, you say, he's like a kid in a candy store, but they are kids, so I can't. Yeah. <laughs> the question isn't what Blake can do. The question is what Blake can't do, and there's not much. He can play anything I throw at him. And if his technique isn't up to par, he will work on it until he absolutely nails it. One, two, ready, we go. Blake struggles with saying what's on his mind. But he'll play, and he'll play, and play, and play. And you can kind of tell what mood he's in by how he plays. Good job, buddy. Thank you. about capturing that spark. Ideas come usually at the most inconvenient times. Driving along in the car, I have to pull over and get my book out and write something down, or I have to cut the shower short, or I'm in the middle of going to the bathroom. It's like, no, no. Here it is right here. Give me notes. I might be the next, ain't got no satisfaction in there. Probably not, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a song by The Temptations called Papa Was a Rolling Stone. It's a six and a half minute song. Well, yeah. To be a bass player, you have to get your ego out of the way. That's it. I almost lost my first professional gig because of overplaying. The band leader said, if you don't pull it back and simplify, I may have to let you go. You know, imagine if Gollum played the bass. Play more notes is boring. No, no, the master's the song. <laughs> it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> that first gig that I almost lost led on to the next gig, which led to me playing with Jimmy Page with the firm. some peas. You know, there's no place like Nome. I really was living the rock and roll fantasy. And I was living the reckless rock and roll lifestyle that goes with that. This is nice. This is going to be good in juice. It's almost Ooh. lemony, isn't it? You feel kind of invincible, like you're on top of the world. That's when things started to change. <laughs> it's so nice, it made my eyes water. Oh yes, it made my throat burn. In a good way, of course. It's quite nice. It's quite nice, isn't it? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> George and I, wow, well, it goes back a long way. That's a whole story unto itself. I, uh, in my crazy days in the 80s. <laughs> With the firm, we had our own plane. And it's Jimmy Page and that. 
playing sold out shows and traveling the world and endless parties and all that the stuff that you dream of that you think is going to fulfill you and make you happy it just doesn't I was drinking like almost a bottle of whiskey a day there were people that had known me during that time and they saw a friend of mine like a year or so later and they're like oh yeah I was hanging with Tony Franklin I was like, oh that guy is he still alive oh wow they seriously thought that I would not make it well I'm so, really glad you did <laughs> me too love <laughs> rock camp is a little bit like self-realization because you are finding yourself be able to give the campus a magical experience that we'll never forget and draw my experiences to be able to do that is it's a pretty deep thing it really is it's beautiful it's magical how i've reconnected with my joy of playing was here of Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. This isn't a chore. Yeah, I'm at a point in my life where I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. It's not about money, it's not about um, perks, it's about I enjoy it. What struck me the most in a way was how appreciative and excited and inspired these people are. It's just a really cool experience to touch someone's life, inspire them with music that they grew up with. That's what it's about, I realize now. These people don't have to do rock and roll fantasy camp. I, it's been really great to see the way, the, the way Alice Cooper and, and the way Roger Daltrey and, and Gene Simmons, to see how these rock stars have been touched by it and wanting to be part um, is really, has really been a, a beautiful thing. No, you guys should go to these master classes, no, though, these I'm master classes. I'm going class. to the vocals one. Oh, good. Jason. And you should go to a guitar one. Or, or, or you can go and drink, whatever you choose. <laughs> well, the two are not mutually exclusive. <laughs> yes, right. right? Just try it right now. suffered a lot with anxiety and panic attacks over the years. I really had to find my own way to fix it myself. And for me, it was music. These people that do come to the camp, a lot of them have problems they want to overcome. And within those five days, eventually, they show their true colors and their true angers. I came from Cuba as a six-year-old kid. My mother and father gave me a guitar and said, learn how to play this. It'll help you make friends wherever you are. Grew up pretty strict, orthodox Jewish family. Definitely the black sheep of the family. If they saw me like this right now, they'd probably get a little scared and, uh, and a bit worried. I've always just had stage fright. You know, I never ever thought I was good enough. But now, more than anything, I just feel anxious, but ready to rock. I'm 
not a very good guitar player. You know, oh my God, Jeff Beck, I can't possibly get up on stage and play alongside him. All of a sudden, the drums just kick in and just take the band to a whole nother level. And I turn around and it's the drummer from Chicago. It's the first time in my life that I had ever played with a professional drummer of that caliber. When guitarists of the like of Jeff Beck go and they come out full of enthusiasm for it, you know that this thing is offering every musician that does it something. When you walk on the stage, you own it. And no one at that moment and at that time is better than you are. Whatever it is, don't be afraid to like do you, you know? Loosen up a little bit. This is about having fun. <laughs> if I was in charge, I would get rock and roll fantasy camp in every school. Sixth grade. And I used to teach sixth grade. That's what keeps me going. Every day I open up my emails and people just tell me we've changed their lives at this camp. It was awesome. Jamming with the guy that wrote one of rock's biggest anthems ever. Just wow. It's a great feeling when people think you're important and you make them feel like the other stars, and they are. I see you playing, you playing your part, but get with him. As long as you got him back there. You can't lose. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't lose. <laughs> yeah, it's great, right? Paul's right. The pocket. Yeah, buddy Miles. Good job, guys. Thank you, Paul. That was awesome, man. For him to point to me to say, with that guy back there on drums, you can't go wrong. And he said, he reminds me of Buddy Miles. I grew up listening to Buddy Miles. To be acknowledged by someone of the caliber of Paul Stanley of Kiss, what he has achieved is what my ultimate goal is. And that's something I will cherish for the rest of my life. I really will. To be recognized by my peers, if you will, in a genre that I'm not used to was uplifting, was encouraging. Um, so I will now be a metalhead. All right. So. <laughs> Depending on your age group and your taste in music, there are certain musical movements and personalities who are very defining and Dave Mustaine is a musician who many would say is the guy who created thrash metal through the way he played guitar. When I was in my bedroom jamming these songs when I was in a high school band, if you would have told that Scott that someday Dave Mustaine's gonna be watching you play this song, that Scott would have just never believed you and said like whatever, you know, hype dream. and all those sorts of things. It was like the Megadeth soundtrack, the Metallica soundtrack. Thank you. Context for Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp in my life has been that I have a special needs son, my second child. He was born with brain damage. Couldn't see, couldn't hear, no voluntary movement. Yeah. This was the end of me being a musician, actually. In fact, I was recording a CD, and I was planning on releasing it, and I was planning on even touring behind it. Then Jackson came along. And became the only thing that matters, how do we help Jackson? First thing is he has profound, diffuse bilateral brain damage. How do you help this child be the fullest human being they can be? And so all attention went to Jackson. Not happening. We had a very intensive home program, helping rewire his brain. It was like boot camp at our house.
picture. What's this? Ah. Good job, Zach. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Perfect. One day, you know, your horns in his ears and actually his eyes would move. Hey, as hey. if there's a reaction. Hey. I remember us going, did that really just happen? One, really just hard-gained miracle type stuff. So tell me more about the day. Yeah. What's your film about? Me being a monster. About you being a monster? No way. And what do you do when you're a monster? I take kids down. Down where? Down to Chinatown. You take kids down to Chinatown? That's awesome. Yeah. You drop first and then I drop after. One, two, three. Oh, no! You got to get it right in the lines, OK? One. Stay in the black lines. Good one, that's a good one, slow down. Excellent. Excellent, good job, nice work. So Jackson, what would you like to do this year? What's one of your goals for this year? To play bass at Walk in the Wall Fantasy Camp. Yeah? That's the G, so that's, the, that's right, but we're gonna do open first. All right, third fret. You, Jackson. So Lox, where'd you go? Golden Boy quarterback. So is there any chicken in your chicken soup? No. no. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Try something? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, how about in the chorus? Sit out the one beat. Na 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 Cool, 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 cool. So whose guitar can I borrow real quick? So that's the riff, and then the, the other main riff in the chorus. Uh, there's a slight little band going up. Good job, guys. That was fun. Yep. This is yours, too. The siren wobble. What's Teddy like as a counselor? Teddy has a... Or, or was he no, all over the place? sort of all over the map. Sort of. But By the time you've had is, a whole day of work and a, a visiting legend, and then a jam session at the end, you, 10, 12 hours can actually start to unhinge you. So we have to go to the martini bar to do some repairing. As long as you guys had fun, you guys sounded freaking fantastic. I mean, you guys did. You know, the fact that David lets me do the Q&As here, Oh, that's, that's awesome, huge man. For yeah, me. I, I mean, know. If it weren't for Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, I can't say that I would even have any interest in broadcasting it. <laughs> that's what? Cowboy Ninja? Bear Cowboy Ninja. Bear Cowboy Ninja. Oh, OK, I got it. She's improved a lot. Yeah, I'm yeah, telling knows. you. You're going to have a big sadness Monday morning. Oh, yeah. You're going to get, like, depression, bro. You're like, uh. The low after the high? Post-camp <laughs> depression is a thing. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking. Right. So tonight will be patience, bad moon. a little bad moon rising, right? OK, there we go. So that's, ten, that's our set right there. Gentlemen, play it right. Play it with no mistakes and play it well. And um, you'll all, there'll be a drink about, waiting for you at the fun? bar. How about have fun? Ha oh, there you go. Ha and have fun. fun. There you go. A little hard for my little band. Yeah! All righty. So. OK, so last day, guys. Last, last day. day. Last night. How about rock and roll all night? Tammy? Oh, we can do it. Just too strong. 
You're in a bad mood. I am in a bad mood. Just, just do strata. That's a good song. Ooh. Oh, my alarm. I was say, what the hell is that? Listen. Tinkerbell. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. <laughs> Solo, wait. Okay, let's get ready to check in the Southwest. Town. Very important thing. Yeah. You can raise chicken, you fly. <laughs> B33 got a better one than me, and I was on time. What am I? B? B33. I like to be A. We got four minutes. Check this out. Yeah, okay. We Hang on, I gotta put my plugs in. No, no, we'll play low. She's an amazing singer. She gave me chills a couple of times. Last night we played, she hits a note. It's ridiculous. I fell off the drum stool. Are you I, sure? I put seatbelt on. <laughs> what do you like better, being behind the kit or being in front of the band? I'm going to be honest. It's more nerve wracking being in front. Being up in front. Oh my God. More nerve wracking. You can hide behind the drums. And the even drums. If you mess up, you can cover it a bit. You can go on with dirty pants. You know, the shirt's wrinkle, or you spill something down here. Sneakers. It doesn't matter. I have to thank you very much for giving me confidence to do this, because this was very, very hard for me. But no, seriously. <laughs> this is like the love this connection. This very hard for me. You guys sound great. You guys sound great. It's fantastic. I mean, it really was. It's very hard for people to be up on stage in the first place. You know, who wants to be told, gee, that stinks? But once you break through it, you realize the only thing you have to fear is fear itself. Thank you, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Playing in your bedroom is not the same as playing with a drummer and playing with a bass player. And if one part is wrong, it makes the other part wrong. Being in tune is important. I was drinking so much water in my room, man, I'm gonna piss my pants. Not playing ahead of the beat. How you feeling, brother? I've felt better. Not being too loud. But the show must go on. Hey, you know, I got that throat spray if you want to blast a bit. I'll try anything right now. And listening. Just blow it out, so who cares? After we're done, then it's fine. Which is the one thing that some people forget is one of the most important parts about playing music. My dad lived a, a, a tough life growing up. He lost all his sisters except one in the war. But there was the music, whether it was cantorial music, whether it was the opera. It was the power of music that kept my dad alive, surviving Auschwitz and Buchenwald concentration camps. Advertisers. You're just getting advertisers now? Just for now. Yeah, just, just for now. Something, just to have something, and something on the table, and there's going to be other people. So I don't vomit. <laughs> if they're playing three songs and it's 12, 15 minutes, that goes by in a heartbeat. I think we're almost the same size. <laughs> can swap shoes. And if that's going to be 12 minutes of blind terror, then I've kind of haven't done my job and it's a bit of a waste. You need to savor every single second of this. Ready to rock. Uh, I am. Yeah. Ready to rock. Let's kill this today. You're always ready to rock. Born ready. I know. <laughs> I know. Rub, let some of that rub off of me. So Let's not, rub it. There you not, go. Not, not so scared all the time. But you know what it is? You're concentrating on so many other things up there. Yeah. What do you forget? Like the most important thing, breathing. Please welcome back to the stage, Mr. Paul Stanley. Toddler 
leg, he was nonverbal. I mean, completely nonverbal. When he puts a guitar on, and there's a bunch of people out in the audience, he's a different person. a child at a very young age and you don't know what his life's going to be like as he gets older and you know to see him grow and be able to do something is just fantastic I mean as a parent you can't ask for anything more It's really a, 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 a moment for people to rub shoulders and, and get some pointers that they'll probably never use at Madison Square Garden. It's not about that. It's not about how good you are. It's about how much you enjoy playing. No one worries about the bum notes and wrong rhythms. And the out of tune singing, <laughs> who cares about it? It's all about just having fun. Thank you very much, love you guys. Nick Jagger on steroids, Rob Cohen. If you told me that I could be a real, maybe not a rock star, but if I could be a really, really good musician, does that mean that I have to be a rock star to be that? No. No, I could be that in my own little world, and I'm happy with that. All right, everyone, Mr. Paul family! I'm singing <laughs> for the first time on stage. do this, like, you know, I'm going for it. Sometimes you need that kick in the butt. Because your lack of confidence stops you from doing things that you actually probably can do. To play with those musicians on stage was just an extra icing on the cake. Paul Stanley saying, I reminded him of Buddy Miles. He says, man, what are you doing here? You know, he said, you should be out there working, man, and, and, and playing for a living. And then Zach Wilde, come on in. <laughs> you know, that's, that's pretty damn awesome. You know, your nervousness goes through the roof when one of your heroes is watching you jam, but in a cool way. You just in life don't really end up in that crucible it's like you're basically living with these rock stars who you've grown up idolizing. I don't think anyone can go into that experience and not learn about themselves. One of the things I enjoy at camp, I always call myself, I'm a Jewish Santa Claus. If I can make a difference in these people's lives every day, then that's what's important to me. Here I am, raised Orthodox, and I'm in rock and roll and sports. I did take the yarmulke to the next level. Yeah. What an honor. Give me some love. Uh, Laxton, I'm thrilled you're here. Excited? Yeah. Right, is this a dream for you too? Go yeah. to Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp? Yeah. It's my dream too that you're here. Made rock? Yeah. Made rock? Hey, what's your rock star name? JJ Wapow. Great. Hey, Dad, what's your name? <laughs> Father of JJ Wapow. That's it. How you got it? <laughs> you ready to do it? Yeah. Get some raw power here. 
Okay, you ready? What? Hit it, Rocky. It's very easy in this business, which we're incredibly privileged to forget where you came from. That these camps reminded me of where I was when I made my first guitar, you know. We reminded ourselves why we started playing in the first place. By the time it's all over, you know everything about their mother and their father. It's pretty cool. They're rock stars for the weekend. It's rock and roll. It's in the title, right? Rock and roll fantasy camp. Because of fantasy camp, a light came on to me about what I do and how lucky I am and how blessed us musicians who get to play music for a living. It's like, I got it made. <laughs> I've got the best job in the world. Roll the belly, the belly. Whoa, whoa. Handwork. There you go, oh, there you go. <laughs> I've had situations where people are so excited about the camp and when they're done, they'll write to me go, listen, I'm thinking about quitting my job and, and going to music full time. And that's when you have to, you have to kind of rein them in a little bit and go, well, don't, just not just yet, you know, but it happens. First one to get there and the last to leave, I hate that. Next life, I'm playing flute. Nobody is born a rock star. Nobody's born president or anything. They started off as kids also. And the magic of the camp is you actually meet somebody who scaled Mount Olympus and you have the sense, maybe I can do it too. Have you been practicing? Yeah. Beethoven would always say, you know, it's not about playing the right notes, it's if, if you have passion. If Bob Dylan and Gene Simmons and Jimi Hendrix auditioned for The Voice, do you think we'd make it? Oh, it's about it, huh? this is about it. You think we'd make it? I always think that the people that show up at the fantasy camp are people that have it in the back of their mind. You know, this could develop into something. That something could happen if I got really good. I, I can't think of a more fun thing to do. I mean, it's better than stamp collecting, you know.
You're never too young. You're never too.